Visiting us uh, from around the world via our live streaming, we say to you, Assalamu alaikum, and also Eid Saeed Mubarak. Assalamu alaikum. Please turn off all cell phones until after Juma, please. Thank you. Shadowan Muhammadan Rasulullah. A Shadowan Muhammadan Rasulullah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Who are the the khala khala insana mentin wa ukrujuhu mina dhulimati ila nuh fa nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gah firuhu nu'minu bihi wa natawakalu alayhi. Na'udhu billah min shururi anfusina wa siya'ati a'malina. Mehiyatuhu Allah fa la mudilla lah wa may you delil for la hadiya la ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la lahu almulk wa lahu alhamd wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu attaqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutuna illa wa antum mus Limon. For Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer, we give all praise and thanks to Almighty God, Allah, the God of Nibaba, the cherisher and the sustainer of all systems 
of knowledge of all worlds. Alameen, Rabbil Alameen, ilm, ilm, systems of knowledge, Alameen, plural, but also dual, the world of the seen and the world of the unseen. Uh, both have a knowledge anatomy. So we give all praise and thanks to Almighty God Allah as we are continuing in these great days of the Eid, the days that start after Ramadan and begins with our takbirat that says Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Allah is bigger. Allah is greater. Allah is more important. Just coming off of Ramadan, Allah wants to remind us of that, that He's bigger, He's greater. And we say Allah again, Allahu Akbar Kathira, Kathira. That, 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 that he's, uh, we should say it much and often, and Allahu Akbar Kabira, meaning that he is big, he's the biggest over anything that's big. He is the biggest of all that is big. And we know we can come up with some big imaginations. There's a lot of big space out here. Allah sees bigger than all that is big. We're reminded of that on these days of the Eid. Allahu Akbar Kabira, Kabira, he's big over all uh, that is big. And then Allah reminds us, that la ilaha illallah, that there is nothing, nothing worthy of our devotional life. Nothing, no God, nothing but Him. Nothing but Him. La, it's, it starts with a protest. La ilaha illallah, and He said, Wahda alone, to emphasize that He is one. And not that He is one, because you know one can be divided, that He is unique. Not just one, but unique. That cannot be divided, can't be broken up into fractions. No, he's one and he's all and he is complete. This is Allah, our God. And he says, Walhamdulillahi kathira. And then we say, Alhamdulillahi kathira. Praise him. Alhamdulillah. And as we know, this Alhamdulillah, uh, meaning uh, not just praise, not just thanks, but the complete and perfect, complete and perfect praise and thanks. All of it, all of it belongs to him. Alhamdulillah, he considered all of it, not part of it, but all of it belongs to him. So he, we are required to say that on these days of Eid, these days of celebration, that to be reminded of any, anything that we have, anything we think that's due to us, all of that is owed to Allah giving us the nature uh, to be able to qualify for whatever it is that we think that we can receive, that we can give, or uh, that we are due. So we thank Allah for giving us that, this great days of Ramadan. Uh, that we've just come in from. We know these days, we're in the period now where we should be receiving this uh, purification. Purification has taken place. And so we have been cleaning ourselves, going through a process, as a process has been taking place uh, during the days of Ramadan. And we're celebrating those days now. We have purified our soul, we've purified our flesh, our whole life to try to make the whole life, again, not part of the life, the invisible and the external, the whole life to make it comply to be in conforming uh, with the will of Allah. That's the whole life. This is what Ramadan was meant to do for us. So that the whole life will conform to that and after coming out of Ramadan, because we focus on that and we've seen the improvements. If we fasted the way Allah told us to fast, we would have seen the improvements and now Allah wants us to work to see that kind of conforming to His will in all of society in all of mankind. This is what now we're supposed to work for. We're supposed to work for that now that we've finished Ramadan, to work to, 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 to the light that we've gotten, that we received, to try to have that to spread during this month of Ramadan. We have returned. We return in this ninth month. The ninth month, we know it comes around. Every again, every 12 months, it comes around again. And we were reiterating during the day of the year Qutbah uh, that there are 12 days in the year. And this is again 12, uh, meaning that it continues to, to come around often. It's a continuous to return. And Allah reminds us, He's reminding us again that, that uh, the Eid meaning return, 12 meaning return, uh, happiness, yes, but again, uh, it means to, to, to reoccur. To reoccur. And you can expect it to reoccur. And Allah wants us to know that because He wants us to know that He's going to always give us help. It'll come back. It'll come back. He's always trying to help us. And so this, this, this to, to, to return in, in, in our returning to him, which is our destiny. We say when, when someone passes, again, as we mentioned before in the Yil Qutbah, the first thing we say, the first thing is to come to our mind. It's inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi wa rajun. That's the first thing, to be reminded along the way. And he gives us help along the way, that we are going to return. We are on a trajectory that goes right back where it came from, 
but now we should have improved upon that life. Ramadan shows us that we can improve upon that life. We can discipline that life. We can bring out the excess of that life because it's on a trajectory back. And as Allah lets us know in the Quran, He says that, look at it. Some He take when they just come here, when they're young. I lost my grandson at two. He's taken. And you know, it goes on at the height. Some he allowed to be at full strength. Some have lost babies. My daughter lost five children, babies. Before, now she has five now. Allah blessed her. But, but that's, that we, it's real. And we, we lose them all the time. And some he allows to go back to the old age of knowing nothing after having known much. And we have those here now taking care of their parents. And some of their parents, they have to put diapers on them. They have to be taken care of. They have to be assisted in their movement, just like they were taken care of and assisted when they came here. So Allah says, that's a sight. And they, the whole trajectory is to go back. So Allah says that you come back. This is about returns. But he is letting us know that the return is going to be an Eid, a happy return, if we return back to the nature and build upon the excess that he created us upon. Just like when we come here as babies. That's why, again, it's in the ninth month. To remind us of how we came here after nine months. How we came here. You know, no criminals, no murderers, no liars. And we look at Muhammad's life, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't come, he didn't steal. Never told a lie, can you imagine that? The man never told a lie, never stole anything, never wronged anybody. Even before he had scripture. He stayed to the nature that Allah created all life upon to show us it's possible. To show us what we can do, what we can achieve. And he made the doubt go away when he had the dear prophet again. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he told us, he said, Anna Bashrun Mithlikum. I'm just like you. I don't want you to miss the possibility that you see in me in your own self. So, so, so see yourself in me. What am I? I'm you. He's telling us that he's you. He wants us to see that. And Allah gives us this process of this month of Ramadan to return to get back to that nature and begin to clean ourselves. We're pure. If we go on through the Ramadan correctly, all our sins just drops off. It drops off. And we're, 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 we're clean. And we're pure. So we have an opportunity to build upon the excess of that life in preparation for our return. The trajectory that we're on. We want to go back, but then how do we return? This is the key. Allah shows us how we should return to Him. So we thank Allah these great days of Eid. And we know this is a time of new birth. New birth. We come in with a new moon. A new moon. And that's new life, a new opportunity, a new chance that we've all been given. It's like going to a classroom and the teacher tells you that everybody has an A. Now, whether you keep it, it's up to you. Allah has just cleaned us up. We've been purified. Everything's wiped away. Whether we stay in that state is up to us. Whether we build upon that state is up to us. But He lets us know that He still is going to be there to help us. He gives us often opportunities to get the help that He needs from Him. He don't just give us and bring us here from babies and leave us. Just like our parents, we don't just come here and be detached and we're left alone. The biblical cords cut still, and we still have to have that sense of dependency. But once we come into a state of conscience, then it's time to depend on Allah. And He's there to help us just like the mother is there to help us. Just like the Father said to help you. He's bigger, he's bigger than both. But we know Allah lets us know that this is a celebration for us to focus on our original nature that's common for all of human beings. All human beings, this original nature that, 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 that all life takes this process of nine months. That's the normal process. And we know Allah let things happen sometimes before or later. But this is the normal process for all human beings. And we know the child who wants to be obedient. Once that child comes out from that mother, and get some state of consciousness. If the child wants to be obedient uh, to the parent, uh, they try to do things that they know is gonna make that parent pleased with them. That's what they're gonna try to do. And, they, and, they, and, they, and when they feel that they have done just what the parent wants them to do, when they feel that then there is a sense of pleasure, there's a sense of happiness, but it's special. It's special because you please them. And Allah lets us know that, you know, this is the nature that he's given us. He's given us a nature like that. That we want to be able to please those that's over our life. And it never leaves us. That nature never leaves us. It's still here with us. And it comes to us as babies. And it stays. And this is why this month of Ramadan is for us to reflect on what comes with us when we come here as babies. And that's one of the things that come to us when we're babies. Allah created us like that. And he has put that in our hearts. To want to have this desire. And so we know we fasted. Those who fasted, we know we fasted and we please Allah. So there's a special pleasure in knowing that you did what you were asked to do. That you met 
the requirements of what you were asked to do. It's a, it's a special happiness. So we, we say it's Eid Sayyid Mubarak, double, added, added, double. That means happiness uh, as well. And we know that Allah, again, he's above parents. He's above parents, but he lets us know that they're close to him because he used the term Rab, Rabiani, when they, when they, when they helped me. He, that term is associated with parents when they, when they, when they raised me. Uh, uh, under my Sagira when, we, when I was small. Allah has us make this special prayer uh, for our parents, but he uses the word Rabiani connected, and he's Rab. So he lets us know, look at that, but again, he's, he's bigger, he's, he's over the parents, you know, and he's above the whole world. And we do this, we do this kind of fast only for Allah's sake. And when you do it only for Allah's sake, then that's when you get the special pleasure. But we want to say, those who are listening, those who were unable to, to keep the fast, if you're unable to keep the fast or fast due to some health problems, that these days of Eid, these days of happiness, that you should also share with this uh, victory as well. Keep that in mind because Allah lets us know, he says, he says it's for him. Fasting is for him. And he says that everything is judged by intention. He said, these are, he said the month is a month of blessings. And the bottom line is if you have been conscious, alakum tatakum, if you have been conscious that this month is for Allah, and then even if you weren't able to fast, even if you weren't able to do the things that Allah requires you to do, but you had a desire, and Allah knows, if you, if you, if you had a strong desire, Allah rewards the desire. Because you say everything, all matters are judged by intentions. So those who have health problems, don't feel bad. Don't beat yourself up. No, you've got the reward. Allah, he rewards that. This is one of the, the blessings that we have, you know. If your intentions were to fast, but you couldn't, you get the reward. You have the reward, though you couldn't do the actual fast. And the rewards, as our dear prophet told us, the rewards, there are many. And again, we know that we start off with mercy. Mercy from Allah. Then we have forgiveness. And then we have the freedom. The, the, the gates of paradise open to us. Uh, freedom from the, from the fire. Freedom from the fire. Uh, Nijat, this Nijat, you know, and again, as we mentioned before, the three periods of the month of Ramadan are the main three things. Mercy, forgiveness, and being free from the fire. And, and, and being able to have the gates open to you. Those three things are the main three things that Satan wants to deprive you of. He don't want you to get those three things. He don't care about anything else. He know he got you if he got you away from receiving those three things. He don't waste no time on you and other things. If you engage in that, then he's going to be trying to come at you. But he can't get you if you have that process. That's why our dear prophet, the first peace upon him, said that he's locked up. Then he can't, he can't, he can't touch us. So this is, this is the, the, the best of blessings that we're receiving coming off the month of Ramadan. Allah's given us a blessing. And we know that uh, fasting mainly is to bring us close to him. You know, we know we, 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 we get away. We put distance between us and Allah. Uh, you know, not that Allah's not always present. He's always present. He says, closer to us than the, than the source that, that feeds our brain, our heart. Now he's closer to us than just that. In fact, he is the source. He is that source that feeds it all, that feeds our whole life, uh, you know. And uh, so, but we put distance between us and him in our, in our behavior. So this is a chance for us to get back to him. And then we know the whole society benefits. The whole society's benefit. As I mentioned in the Eid, that we can't dismiss that this many people, are fasting across the globe. They have restrained themselves. They have disciplined themselves. And they become more conscious. They're doing more prayers than they've ever done during the year. In this month, they're giving more in this month. Charitable organizations, they, some of them, they get it so much in Ramadan, it satisfies their whole admin budget for the whole year. This is the month, because the month gives so much. So again, the logic is that the people give so much. So it's a great benefit to the whole world that Muslims are fasting. And sometimes we miss that. And again, we say that the world, as, 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 as the ills that we see, the things that trouble us, they will be far worse if this wasn't taking place. But this takes place, and it's a big force uh, in the society. This month of Ramadan, he lets us know that Satan will be put in the chains and we'll have freedom from the fire. You know, we make the prayer. Rabbina atina fit dunya hasan. Oh Allah, give us the good in this life. Wafil akhirati, and in the next life. And then it's wakina, wakina, and save us from the fire. So it's about being saved from the fire. And so Ramadan is trying to position us so we'll be, we will be saved from the fire. This is what it's about. The last period coming out of that, coming to the end, we're saved from the fire, but we want to stay. He said, ask Allah to keep the doors closed. 
to keep the gates closed, to keep them locked up. Ask Allah, pray and beg your Lord to listen. That, that has occurred. But it, he's, it's up to you. He said, you ask him. You ask him to keep him close. You have to do something to keep him locked up, to keep him close. So you can have the protection from the fire. And this fire, he, again, he, uh, he, uh, Allah says, call that man, man, Illa testadu, illa armirtuka. Call that, and a khayru minhu. And a khayru minhu. So Allah asks Satan, the enemy to mankind, what is the matter with you? What is preventing you from making sajda when I command you? So this tells us what it's all about. What this Ramadan is about obeying, being obedient to the commands of Allah. He hit his Satan. He gives his explanation. He says that I'm better than the one that you asked me to make prostration to. He said, because you created me from fire. And you created him just from the, from the earth, from the clay. He said, I'm better. And a khairu. And a khairu. And that's what happens. That's what starts to take us away. That attitude right there, we be starting thinking we're better than somebody. Because of my I dress, I'm, I'm more modest in my dress than you. Your hair not covered, sister. I'm better than you. Brother, your pants leg not up enough. I'm better than you. These things right here, this is the, I, this thing coming in your mind, you think you better. And so we had people here sick, couldn't do a full prostration. Another person went down, saw their head, didn't touch. They was concentrating on that. They couldn't wait to finish their prayer to tell that person, oh, your prayer not gonna be accepted. Now they didn't understand that person couldn't, couldn't do the full, they did what they could do. We got brothers, can't even get down, they're sitting. You pray, that's one thing that can't nobody stop you from doing, because you pray internally. Wherever you are, you can lay down and still pray and turn and go through the full movement. Just because you don't see the, feel, the physical full movement doesn't mean they haven't completed it. But that's what happens. We start thinking that we're better and that's the birth that Shaitan gets. He begins to come out. Those kinds of things, these attitudes to think I'm better because of my job, because of my status, because of my race, because of my ethnicity, because I speak the language, because I know the history. All these different things, people think they're better. I was born a Muslim. You a convert. All these different things, was that, there's that thought that says, I'm better. This is where the birth begins. So Allah said, yeah, ayyuh al-adina amanu. Cool, cool, cool. Isn't that what the baby says? They say the baby cools. Isn't that something? They're speaking about this right here. They're reminding you. And cool is the essence. This is the imperative of taqwa. Have this regard for this. And the baby in that nature that comes from Allah in the ninth month, that's coming from a state of paradise, no sin. That baby has no sin as cooing. That's the first thing, that's universal. They are reminding us to be mindful of that. Allah says, Koo and fusikun, wa ahlikun, narin, the fire. Save yourself and your family from the fire. But they're giving us the key to what saves us. It's God consciousness. This is how Satan gets us. This is, what, this, is, this is how we put that particular fire out. This is how we do that. We know this month of Ramadan, back in the day before, it was a month for fasting. It, was a, it, Ramadan, it, did, it didn't just come around with revelation. This was a month that was in existence. And the month had a reputation. Then when that month would come around, it would, it would be so hot. It would be so hot, it was, it was called uh, uh, beating the desert. Beating the desert, you know? Uh, and the feet, the feet of the animals had to be protected. And they had this thing called Ramda, meaning to protect, protect, so they would burn, they mess the feet up. And they put these covers, they put the protected covers during that month to protect the feet of the animals they were wrapped up. So, 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 so it would save them, keep them safe from the fire, from the fiery sands, the fiery desert. And this is what, this is the same protection. Allah is trying to give us from the destructive fires of our appetites, destructive fires of our passions, these destructive fires of these inclinations that we, that we get, that, that, that Satan put in us. He's trying to protect us, and, we, and we've gone through that, so Allah wants us to stay in that position. You know, the world, it pulls against us. The world pulls against us, the us Allah created us to be. And again, we're going, that, means, that means that tells us that we're always going to have opposition. 
It, it, this life, that's, just, that's the key. There will always be opposition to the life. You don't get no opposition when you get to the next life. You know, that's when you have nothing. Nothing opposes your life in the next. Nothing works against your life in the next. But in this life, there's going to be opposition. But Ramadan also means meeting the opposition by putting on a cover, by having a protected cover. And Allah is trying to help us understand that that protected cover is taqwa. Taqwa is to protect us. Look, look at, look at this, uh, this ayah. Yeah, ayah haladina amanu. Ku and fusikum wa athikum nare. That's six to six, six. Didn't it? Six, six, six. Three sixes. That ayah, it, it no, it no answer that. That is three sixes. Six, six, six. You know? Because this, again, this is how the beast, this is about telling how to tame the beast. This ayah tells us to tame the beast. To keep the fire from you. And how to do that. You know? And this is, again, this is, this is, this is how Ramana has come. This, 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 this taqwa, you know? And he says, he says uh, if intelligence doesn't keep it in check, then we begin to act like animals. Actually, we begin to act less than animals. And animals, they follow instinct. They follow instinct. We, we, we look at animals, they don't have the power to reason with the intelligence. So when we look at them, they don't have the kind of problems that we have, like obesity. You don't see animals running around obese unless some human had them and, and domesticated them. Uh, then you don't see them. Because they check, they're checked not by intelligence, they're checked by instincts. Human beings are checked by intelligence. That's why Allah says most of the people are misled because they don't check it. Their knowledge is not checked. Their appetite not checked with the knowledge. You see? What knowledge? Scripture. Allah's guidance. That's what checks it. That's what checks it. That's what, that's what keeps and tames the beast, keeps him in check. So Allah lets us know that this month of Ramadan is a shaping. It says the baby is, is shaped in the womb of a mother. We are being shaped during the month of Ramadan. Allah, Allah says to us, uh, well, you know, Nara, Nara, uh, the fire, uh, has the same essence as Nur. So that's light. But fire has light too. You see? But Nur is the purifying light. Hmm? This Nar here is the destructive. And this is what we ask a lot of savers from that. You see, if we, get, if we are saved from that, then we are saved from that by Noor, by the purifying light. And so Allah, he puts us in this month of Ramadan. He's trying to help us. Uh, he's trying to shape us. He turns us back in the womb to, to where we can be shaped. So we are vulnerable to him shaping us during the month of Ramadan. Because we let things go. And we give ourselves to Allah this month. And we resign to the Quran, and we resign in the masjid, and we resign with extended prayers. And so we're essentially, we're back to teen. We're back to clay. Tiffle, teen, coming back to clay. And we know clay, 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 this is what clay means. Allah wants us to get to the state. Clay means that, that, that you're accepting to be corrected. This is what the state means. We have, we've given ourselves, we're accepting to be corrected. And that's the nature of clay. It yields to be formed. This is the nature. And Allah lets us know we have that nature. That's how we come here as babies. It, 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 it yields to those who has this charge, the authority over it to help, to shape it, to help, to form it. This is what they do. Now, if you don't accept, if you don't accept to be correct, then Allah says that you are a light baked clay. So there's two types of clay. There are two types of clay the Quran speaks about. So there's the baked clay and then there's the soft clay that can be shaped. Baked clay, it can't be shaped. It has to be broken. It has to be broken. And so this is the communication from Allah to Allah that tells us. He's sending us a message this month of Ramadan. Bottom line is, would you rather Allah punish you with the sin that your appetite leads you to? Huh? That your desires lead you to. Uh, the, 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 the wrong, the evils that your desires and appetites lead you to. Or if he could give you moral and spiritual guidance. Do you want him to punish you? You are being punished with your own sins. That, that brings that about from the appetites that are not checked. And they force you to, to, to come to discipline. That's one way. That's one way Allah said it could be done. And the other way is that he could feed your moral. 
He can feed your spiritual life and your understanding and bring you into compliance. And so this is what it this, this gives us. And so this month, this month that we're in now, this month of Shawal, the tenth month, this month of being conscious, of taqwa, where you get in there, the kun, the kun, the taqwa, it comes out of that tenth. So now have you gained the consciousness of this so you can be, uh, continue to keep your life on that path. Allah wants us to be like that type of clay. He wants us to be like that. We know we have, as we get ready to conclude this part and get ready to end, He wants us the kind of clay that can be shaped and formed. And he only wants us to be the society and this, this, this sounding, this bait clay, this rigid clay, only against influences that work against the life. And this is what Ramadan was, had prepared us to, by checking good appetites and, and, and encouraging us and promoting that we stay away from other things. He wants us to be rigid against those things, but to be soft, like the part, like the, the, the potter's clay for him, so he can he can shape us. We we hear about Ibrahim alayhi salam when he was he was put in the fire. Uh, the Bible and the Quran both this story is both this tells us an important story when you find those stories in the Quran. And of course you know the Quran always gives us the clarity. It makes it makes things clear that he was put into the furnace by his enemies. And it says that whenever they would would open the door to look at him in the fire, they found him unchanged by the flames. He was unchanged by the flames. And, the, and there's the, these destructive flames, you know? So he wasn't hurt. He wasn't hurt by it. He was put in it. But why wasn't he hurt? What does this mean? This means that his soul, his soul was so much at peace with Allah. His soul was so much at peace with himself that they couldn't take him out of the original nature. And this is the nature that we came here with. And this is the nature in the model Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulihi Kareem Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's about being conscious. Lalakum tatakun. Yeah, ayyaladina aminu. Kutuba alaykum musayamu. Kemme. Kutuba alaladina min qabalikum. Lalakum tatakun. Perchance, perhaps, you will become conscious. So let's go back briefly a moment because of what's happening in the next week. Uh, Juneteenth is next week. And some don't know what Juneteenth is. Some are, are studying and understanding. Many know what Juneteenth is, 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 is all about. Uh, but I want to connect that Juneteenth uh, briefly uh, with, with Bilal. And we know Bilal, uh, he was the first Mu'edhan. And again, the Mu'edhan, now look at this now. He, the Mu'edhan, he is supposed to be conscious. And he's supposed to be attentive. He has to have that state. Because his job now is to call others to do the same. Now when we look at the history of Bilal, look at the history of Bilal, this first Mo'edhan. In the state that he was in, he was unconscious of Allah, and what he was created upon, the excellence of his nature, and he had resigned, and he was a slave. But something woke that up. He came into knowledge he came into consciousness of his creator and what he was created for. And his soul, his soul, the same soul that we just spoke about with Ibrahim alayhi salam, his soul was given to Allah. And when the master again found out and discovered that he was on this path of Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, this new religion, he had to make an example of him. He had a lot of power, and he knew if he made an example, it had a lot of weight. His slave, not his, not his slave was going to be rebellious. And we know that Bilal told him, so you can, you can put this through the flesh, through the, through the fire, put this flesh in the fire, do what you want to do with it. He said, but you don't have my soul. You don't have my soul. And the, and the master said, okay, we're going to put that to the test. 
And he did just that. He put it to the test. And we have, we're, reminded, we're reminded of this, this that Bilal went through. And again, he went through something that none of the companions have gone through. This horrific, elevated stages of torture, of torturing him. And we know uh, the history, the history shows us uh, that one of our dear companions, the companions of Muhammad the Prophet again, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr, Wajilahu uh, Anhu, he had, he had the, the, the funds and he paid for his freedom. But our, he was free inside. His soul was already free. He was resigned to that. He would not give it up. He would not be disobedient. But here now Allah have caused the physical to be in compliance also with the invisible, his soul, and he's free. And we know that Bilal was raised up. And we look at, we look at his status. And we was talking about it, we mentioned at the end, how his life, one who was a, a slave and who was freed. And then not only was he freed, Islam freed him he was made equal. He did something again that you just didn't do back then. You never refer to a slave as your brother. They less than that. And you never let them eat from the same plate. And you never let them wear the same clothing. But here, once he was free, this prophet, again Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, called him brother, made sure they wore the same clothing. They even ate from the same plate ate from the same, can you imagine that, him eating from the same plate with our dear prophet, first people in Bilal, who was a slave. And then he had a special blessing to be the one to call the other hand, to be that one to call everyone, to wake them up. Elevated, he was, he, he was, a, he was a, 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 a scholar himself. A th he educated a lot of people. But even in that state, though so close to our dear beloved prophet, and we have to be reminded of this, that the other companions, many of them right during that same time, can you, I mean, just, just, just to think of it, you just can't believe it. Those during the same time, observing this, observing Bilal, began, he elevated everything. Close, the prophet loved him. Had prophecies, prophecies. He's a prophetic figure. The prophet had made prophecies. There were prophecies. He said, I'll see Bilal in the future. In fact, I see him in the paradise. I hear the sandals. Even after all of this and his dearness, they still want to pick on Bilal. Make disparaging comments. Make fun of him. To the point that the prophet had to let them know. They, he had to make a comment on it. I'll tell you how bad it's got. He said, that that you ridicule, that you dislike, that you talk about in Bilal, is in you. He said, we are all Bilal. Isn't that something? He had to make that comment back then. And then we look at, again, how things go on. The, the world is watching, particularly the African nations. And again, we say the Fulani tribe, which was the largest, particularly on the western and of central. Uh, Africa. Many of the nations now that have been separated were a part of the Fulani tribe. They're looking at this thing unfold and here they see a religion that promotes freeing the slave, but don't just promote it, it actually frees the slave. And once it frees them, it makes them equal, equality. They're equal. And then elevates them. And they embrace that. And then we see Africa becoming Muslims. And as the world begins to fast forward, things happen. And then we find this slave trade, this enslavement takes place in the Middle Passage. 12 million slaves and, and many, many, many more. In fact, it was so bad on the, the Middle Passage, they say the sharks, because the, so many lost their life, the sharks would follow. They just followed that trail. That's what their feeding grounds just to follow the trail of the ships. They knew there was gonna be some food. That's how, that's how bad it was. And so then we come, come here to America. 400 years uh, uh, to, to this year, this year is 400 years from what they're classifying now, uh, 1619. 
uh, when they when they had 20, 20 of them were brought to to the colony of uh, Jamestown. So they're commemorating that uh, this uh, this year and the Juneteenth. We'll be putting more emphasis on that this weekend coming up. Uh, next weekend, it's the Juneteenth weekend. Uh, they commemorating uh, emancipation, emancipation when those who were enslaved didn't get the word on the emancipation that had taken place, and, and they begin to celebrate. Uh, so that that'll be taking place uh, next week. So many will be participating uh, in that as well. When we look at the treatment, the treatment of those, the severe treatment uh, of the slaves, there was a brutal, brutal and, and degradating. Uh, they were punished uh, by whipping, punished by, by by shackling, punished by lynching and and, and hanging and and beating and, and burning and, and mutilating and, 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 and ripping the body apart, branding and sexual abuse and, and, and rape, imprisonment, family separation, being sold at will, torture, and of course, because we know death, degraded life, written off, you know, a whole, a whole people have been disconnected uh, from the life and they're in a whole other circumstances. And here, here they are going, they're going, they're going through something right now, could not read, could not write, it was, a, it was a law. They didn't, want that, that, they didn't want light. They didn't want any light to enter into the brain. They didn't want them to get no ideas. They didn't want them to have no aspirations to escape or to rebel. But it was in the nature. It was in the nature. And then we had, coming from that, there's another movement. Then there's this genetic memory kicks in. In those slaves, we have signs all across America. We have the museum that shows these signs that were put in place. Some stories have been passed. Grave sites with the one finger where we were going through the torch, et cetera. And then the strongest movement, the strongest movement to, 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 to make Islam, I would say, stick in America. A household name. It didn't become a household name until this movement called the Nation of Islam. And I know we have some here. I'm saying this because I, I had to deal with some people last week. And I'm saying it now uh, so we'll be clear. Uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I know some of you, I know we have a diverse audience. And I know what you have told. Well, let's look at this situation here. Here you have an individual. First of all, he had a third grade education. Son of a Baptist preacher. He, he witnessed so much lynchings. This is, this is uh, again, this is Jim Crow time. He's, he's in the Jim Crow period. All this horrific treatment. He didn't know Islam. He didn't have the Islam that we have today. It came to him. It came to him hybrid. But it did come to him with the complete Quran. He didn't know it. He couldn't read it. But it was given to him. And it was told to him that it is not only the complete, it is the complete and perfect word of Almighty God, Allah. That's what he was told. He was told that. And then he was given the name Muhammad. Didn't give a lot of explanation about it right then. But he knew that Muhammad. But that name, his name was pooled before that. Pooled. Went in the water. Sensitive. He was sensitive. He had a sensitive soul. That's part of what it was, because he, he joined when he first heard this person speak. He, he, it touched him. And he, he, had, he had been given to the vices of life. He was given to alcohol because there was a great depression. He, couldn't, he, he didn't have a job, couldn't take care of his family. And when he heard the individual who, who, who came from overseas and given this private, it touched something. He only had a dime. He had a dime. This 10, this is the 10th month. And all our special things take place on 10. We know that, auto fat, et cetera. Uh, we know. And he had a dime. That's all he had. And he gave that dime, that 10. 10 represents consciousness. That was the awakening for him. He was beginning to become conscious. And they began, he was left with that movement. He was left with that movement without the complete picture of Islam. He didn't have the complete picture, but he had the essence. He had the essence. Freedom, justice, and equality. And he began to help the people. He said that he saw enough lynches in his life to last him 76,000 lifetimes. That's a lot of that tell you that tell you that what he saw, what he experienced, what was happening, where he came from in Georgia, south of Georgia, the kind of things that degraded him. And he had a love for his people. He was innocent. He was innocent. He was coming pure and innocent. And he began to do things. He began to do things to get the people ready for universal Islam. He began to clean them up so they'll be proud and have dignity. And they would stand up and not hold their heads down again to the oppressor. No other, even, even the Arab world, they didn't even do that. And certainly the Arabs here didn't do that at the time. Most of them changed their name from Muhammad to Mo and other things. At the time when we were changing our names to Muhammad and other names. He was able to stand up, and that's why a lot of people followed him. Because they saw the courage of this young, small, he was a small man too. But he had no fear. He didn't fear them. He looked them in the face. 
and called him the devil. And people saw that. And they began to embrace that movement. They said, it has to be something with this movement. God, they were praying for help. They said, God has to be with this movement. And they began to join that movement. And he began to do things. He said, everything was taken from you. And many of them couldn't read and couldn't write because I just told you they, it was against the law. They didn't encourage it. It was prohibited. He said, so gave them X. All they had was an X. So he said, go with the X. That's what you've been signing your name with anyway. We don't know. It's the unknown. We'll come back into the names. We know what, where we came from. And then he began to teach them. They couldn't read and write, so he began to say, everybody had to copy this letter. In copying the letter, it taught you how to write. It taught you how to, he began to teach the people the things that they had been denied. The very first ayah, Ikra, one of the things he began to institute to begin to wake the people up. And he knew, and he began to put in his books, in the message of the black man, he has Islam proper. He didn't teach it, but he made sure it was available. He made sure that, like today, that couldn't nobody say that he didn't give them the, the tenets of the religion verbatim. And they're in that book. And he did a little book called the Muslim Prayers. The Muslim Prayers. And it has the exact prayer. He don't miss a beat on how the Muslims are supposed to make the prayer. And he made sure his son, as soon as his son became old enough, he got his son a teacher to teach him how to read the Quran. Not how to understand it, but how to read it. And he told his son, if you stay with this Quran, you will never go wrong in life. That's what he told him when he gave it to him. His son is studying the Quran in the 40s. He's teaching, and he's teaching, and he was teaching different because the others didn't have it. He's the one that had it. He was the one. His job was to bring them to universal Islam. His father said that. He said, my job is to clean you all up. His job, before we can, before we can come to the Quran, the Quran is our prayer. That's the salat. He said, you have to be cleaned up first. We have to make ablution. So he cleaned them up. They dressed up, cleaned up, got off drugs, got off alcohol, got off the streets, came out of prison, stood up, had dignity, began to have jobs and do for themselves. The Quran said, do for yourself. Save yourself first. They began to pull themselves up. The, all the main guidance in terms of social improvement, he began to institute that. So yes, all the 100%, the tenants, the book version of the tenants weren't there, but the practice. In fact, we had more Islamic practice than the Islamic world. They were oppressing women. And here he was dignifying women and making sure they were protected and had their rights, etc. But we still see even in the Islamic world today, quote unquote, they're still oppressing women. Some of them are just coming in to liberate the women after the, our dear prophet have liberated them 1,400 years ago and more. So we had this movement that's here. And like babies, they were pure. They were innocent. They didn't ask for what happened. Allah created a situation. The genetic memory kicked in. And we begin to see things like Malcolm. And again, the movements that came before, Marcus Garvey, Noble Jew Ali, he didn't even give him the whole Quran. He gave him the Circle 7 Quran. Marcus Garvey didn't put emphasis on the Quran and, and emphasis on the life of the prophet. He didn't do that. But I'm saying embedded in this movement, in this movement, this movement that produced four of the most outstanding leaders. There's not a leader in America today, not a Muslim leader in, the, in America today that has done this. We got Muhammad Ali, we have Malcolm X, we have the son of Walter D. Muhammad, and we have Louis Farrakhan, all of them international. There's not a leader, a Muslim leader, really in the world that has produced students like that, that had that kind of appeal to the world. And who would dare say Muhammad Ali wasn't a Muslim? Who would dare say that? Who would, and even in the day, he said, he said, my religion, even before he had the full picture, he said, my religion is the religion of Islam. That's what he said. How you gonna call them Kafirs? Because you didn't understand the language that was coming to them. And this is what the language said. And we, we, they didn't understand it. He didn't want to do the drill down right there because he needed, he needed them for psychology reasons. It said, it said, God, Allah, who came in the person. I'm going to explain to you what it meant. It meant that the plan of Almighty God was working through that person. That's what it meant. And that's what really happened. And we see how the plan of Almighty God unfolded in the person. And then let the people go through. Look what they've gone through. Look, gold, gold is purified in only one way. It's only one way to purify gold. Purification comes from being plunged into the heart of the fire. Not the edges. It has to be plunged into the heart of the fire. The place where the fire is, is harshest until it turns blue. What does blue represent? Spiritual. Hmm? And they call us people of faith, soul people. We became so spiritual. We began to call the, call the Negro spirituals, etc. Everything didn't have nothing else. Blood and soul. That's all was stripped down. Through the process, stripped us down. But that's where Allah wanted us. So he can work on us. 
and we were being kept there until that which is purified loses any resemblance of what it once was. So a new people, you know, no resemblance of the old people that where they came from? A new people. In fact, the language said New Africa. Not saying, just like when they came from overseas, they say not York, they have York, but they say a New York, not the same. Mexico, New Mexico, etc. They put the word new on there to say they're not the same people. So we say New Africa, we're not those. A whole new people were created. Right here, we're upon that today. Allah lets us know that he's taken us as he's done in history. Even the Arabs, the Arabs were written off. The Arab world was written off. They were so backwards, they were so ignorant that the known world didn't think any light would come from them. But Allah did with, with them and showed he did it again with the, with the foundational life of Islam here. May took zeros and made them heroes. He took them from X to excellent. And that's what we are seeing. That's the stage we're on right now. We have been, we have been put to the world. Those who were denied the most. Allah lets us know those who were denied the most that he's going to shape them and get involved and he's obligated so they'll be put in a position where they can contribute the most. And I want to say what I'm saying right now as I close this out. I don't want you to see this and see race. I want you to see what the prophet, the first peace upon him, told the Arabs that were there at that time when they were picking on Bilal. Disparage Bilal was devoted to Allah, was devoted to the way of life, and he told them, we are all Bilal. See yourself in this movement. Don't disconnect yourself from the movement. Don't deny the movement. Embrace the movement. If you embrace the movement, you embrace your life, you embrace the history. Otherwise, you disconnect yourself. And you can't make so much progress when you begin to disconnect yourself from what Allah Ta'ala has put in place. We pray that as a result of our fast and our prayer, our Quranic reading of the Quran, our prayers today, we pray that our appreciation and our love of Allah and His Messenger will grow bigger and that we will come to love each other with more sincere love. Amen. Come with us, Allah. But come to salat, but come to salat. Allah wa akbar, Allah wa akbar. La ilaha illallah. Come up to the line of the river. Okay, again, make sure your lines are straight. Uh, no gaps. Straight lines. No gaps. And kashia. Uh, no gaps goes with shoulder to shoulder. So those are three main instructions. Straight lines. No gaps, meaning shoulder to shoulder. And humility. And again, we say pray like this is your last prayer. We're in the days of the Eid. No guarantee that anybody gonna see another days of the year next year. And uh, so while we're in these days of the year, and there's, and there's also this blessed day, this month of Shawwal, because we can do uh, fasting and get the equivalence of, of the same reward in Ramadan in this month of Shawwal. And so no guarantee that anybody will be around next month to be able to get that benefit, next year to get that benefit uh, as well. Okay, and we have a Shahada uh, immediately after. Someone is taking that Shahada immediately after. Allah Akbar Bismillah Rahman Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawm Al-Din 
إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أرمت عليهم غير مغضوب عليهم ولا أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكَ وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ الَّذِي عَنْكَ دَا ظَهْرَكَ وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ فَإِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّمَا الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى فَإِذَا فَرَغَ تَفَنْزَبْ وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرْ سَمِيَ اللَّهُ لِمَنْ حَمِدَ اللَّهُ أَكْبَرْ Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير مغضوب عليهم ولا الدالين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد Allahu Akbar Sami Allahu Liman Hamida Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam Tabarakta ya adhya jalali wa alaikram La ilahi wa la wahda la yashrika la ilahi wa muqla wa alaikum wa alaikum wa alaikum wa alaikum wa alaikum wa alaikum Assalamu alaikum If we can have our brother, our revere, our brunette make his way to the front please to take his shahada Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. And while he's coming, I want to make sure we apologize to the people. We there was a sewage break that contributed to a, a, a odor that many of us may have smelled uh, when you came. <laughs> 